I'm kind of annoyed because you can't see you can't see how this looks but it's kind of I don't know it was such a good accidental hairdo it was lift it was like this and then it kind of droop but it was kind of it was so perfectly lined as if I'd done it on purpose and then this was all nicely oh, I don't know my dad was like you should make a video with it but it's, it's kind of rubbish now but I wanted to just chat really so as you know from one of my previous videos I had an interview sadly I didn't get that which was okay they gave reasons that were out of my control and they even acknowledged that so that was really nice it was my first ever one my first ever application and my first ever interview so I wasn't you know upset about it at all really it was all a learning curve good to experience and I sent another one got rejected from before the interview phase which was slightly annoying I mean at least they told me that was nice apparently a lot of jobs just don't even tell you but they didn't say why so again I wasn't sure if that was my application or experience or NQT statement and then I received another interview which went really well they were really friendly and because of there was like a zoom mishap so it was I don't know the tone was kind of the whole atmosphere of the interview wasn't, it didn't feel as formal, you know, compared to a waiting outside and coming in, shaking hand, you know, people were on and off Zoom going, hey Sue, are you on the, are you on the Zoom call yet? Uh, you know, it, it completely put me at ease. And because it was a maternity contract, I was kind of hoping that me being an NQT wouldn't be as much of a disadvantage because, you know, if they didn't like me after a year, I'd be gone anyway. But again, I received a phone call on the Monday, my interview was on the Friday, and they said, sadly, you know, you just don't have enough experience, and we realise it's not your fault, but they complimented you on how nice you were in the interview, how kind you were, how you presented, and yeah, I don't know, it's just disheartening. It really is disheartening, and on social media at the moment, a lot of people the kind of stage in their teaching journey the same stage as I am they're finding the same issues it seems a lot harder to get a job as an NQT when they're really you're really relying on what you have on, written down on paper you know in your application or in your CV whereas normally when it's face to face you kind of have that chance to show you can teach because they have to observe you teaching a lesson so it's difficult and not gonna lie it can it can feel disheartening and on this channel I've always wanted to be honest about everything a lot of the times it's highs but I have shown me having lows and I think it's important to acknowledge that it's not just get your PGC pass your skit off you go to a job it really is quite a tough field out there and I think the fact that when I got that second rejection, I didn't completely have a meltdown. I personally am quite proud of that because I feel that sh that shows some personal growth. I think in previous years, I would have been almost offended or really upset. But I know the circumstances out there. I know that it's difficult uh, during this lockdown period for schools and teachers alike. I'm just trying to have a kind of growth mindset about it. The fact that in two interviews, neither of them said that it was my fault or anything I did wrong or they didn't give things that I could improve on in a way that you know that's that's a compliment knowing I've never done that before and I've never done anything similar yeah I think you just need to hope that everything happens for a reason and that the right school is coming for you you know maybe those rejections are happening because actually there is a school out there that I will feel really passionate about and that vacancy has almost been waiting for me I don't know I I am religious but I also believe in things like fate and karma and and things like that and yeah I'm just hoping that my dream school comes along and my dream vacancy because yeah it's as I'm recording this it's the 21st of May now I noticed some that might not seem very late but I have been looking since March, so to me it feels like ages. But yeah, I, I mean, I've still got schools to hear back from. There, um, there are still opportunities out there, so I think it's just being patient. So the camera cut off just as I was 
you know, feeling philosophical, <laughs> so sorry for the angle change. But yeah, there are still opportunities out there and I think it's important just to persevere, carry on and just keep your hopes up. I posted something on social media and loads of people commented being really nice. Some were like, oh, I tried, you know, five times, had five different interviews, only got it on my sixth one. Some were saying it took me loads of attempts, but keep going and now I'm three years into teaching in that school. The point of this video basically was just to give you an update, tell you what's been happening, document this part of my teaching journey and just let others know that you're not the only one if you're in this situation and we just have to keep going, keep persevering and we can do this. And I anyway, if you enjoyed this video or you feel like you can relate to me in some way then give this video a like and subscribe for more teach content. I will see you soon.